Welcome back. And to the other issue, the end of 2020 is fast approaching. And so is the rise for concerns as regards who will take over the reins of power come 2023. A few hours ago, some loyalists of the APC launched a campaign and uh, they began canvassing for a Southwest presidency, specifically a Tinubu presidency come 2023. Today we will speak to well, we were supposed to speak to someone who actually believe in this course, but we understand that uh, the network is pretty bad and is not able to join us. But coincidentally, we are being joined by a public affairs uh, commentator who is also a political analyst to help us look at this issue of uh, 2023 presidency, whether Southwest, Southeast, or some other zones who are showing interest. We are being joined by GD. Benson. Good evening, Mr. G.D. Benson. Yeah, I, I think uh, the audio is quite low. Mr. G.D. Benson, can you hear me? Yes, faintly low. Okay, okay. I, I think I can hear you now. Okay, quickly, um, a lot of issues are coming up, and um, I, I know that you've been following political trends, and... Um, Let's look at, uh, should the Southwest even be considered in 2023 presidency, looking at political arithmetics in Nigeria? Yeah, all regions should be considered. But um, as I started on a jocular note, sometimes that I wish that my name was Jidofo and not Babajide, uh, because I think that in the, in the interest of fairness and equity, the next president of Nigeria should be Anonwosu or Kafo or Kurafo or Nnemeka or what have you. Um, between 1999 and now, we've had a Yoruba president for eight years. We've had somebody from the South South. So in the southern part of Nigeria, the only region uh, or, ge or geopolitical zone, if you like, that hasn't produced the number one citizen is the Southeast. So, and I know that my, the race to which I belong, the Yoruba race, has always been the most vocal when it comes to call for equity and fairness in Nigeria. So. I think that um, the Southwest should be um, throwing its weights behind the Southeastern candidates. Okay, maybe for, ex for, for, for a minute, let's two of us think like politicians. Uh, let's imagine the, the idea behind APC, where you are to jettison the name you bear before as ACN, and uh, as a leader of that party, more like the, the, the founder of that party, you jettison that name to get into... A, a, a merger, so to say, and uh, probably there is truly a gentleman agreement between Muhammadu Buhari and uh, Senator Bola Ahmed Tinumbu. Do you think that um, if there was truly a gentleman agreement, nothing is wrong if it shows interest? Those things are in the realm of speculation. Don't forget that in 2014, there was also speculation that was very rife that um, the Bola Tinubu that we referred to today was positioning to be the running mate to President Buhari. But there was a lot of hue and cry as to the proprietary, um, proprietary the, to whether it was right or appropriate um, to have a Muslim Muslim, ca Muslim, Muslim candidate. And that's what um, God Bola Tinubu dropped. I remember that Femi Fani Karadi was one of the loudest um, um, opponents to that agenda. And that perhaps may have led to the um, emergence of uh, Professor Yemi or Shibaju. Um, gentleman agreement, yes, but is that in the wider interest of Nigerians? I think not. I, again, I go back to the point of equity and fairness. I think that the Southeast should be given an opportunity to produce the next president. Okay, when you talk about uh, uh, um, speculation, from what you've analyzed now, there was a strong... Uh, 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 um, position that that speculation was actually rife and if not true, that uh, he almost became the running mate. And from what others have said, the likes of Tunde Bakari, the likes of people who also confirmed that uh, speculation. If you were Tinubu, for example, don't you think that this is the last chance you have to go for that position, having become a governor, and what else should you look for, if not for president? You've also been a senator. Well, that I've been governor and I've been senator is not an autom automatic, um, what do you call it, right of ascendancy to um, presidency. If that were the case, everybody who's been governor and senator 
should um, aspire to presidency. And there are a lot of them currently in the Senate at the moment from all parts of Nigeria. Um, yes, he has the right, like every other Nigerian does, but exclusivity should not be conferred on him and his ambition. Okay. <laughs> exclusivity should not be conferred on him. I, I, I'm looking at um, uh, the kind of political capital he has built over time. I'm looking at um, what uh, the likes of uh, even Muhammad Buhari would say about the price he has paid for him to become the president. I'm looking at what is out there in his emergence as a presidential candidate of uh, APC, looking at probably the link pocket he has and the, the, the so much that has been given to him. Don't you think these are all factors that should be considered in political calculation? Well, <clears throat> the ambition of one person should not um, automatically sway all of us as voters in Nigeria. Um, yes, he's, he's um, said to have a deep pocket. I'm not sure that he has accepted that. Um, there's been his name has been touted time and again as having the presidential um, ambition for 2023. He's never said anything to that effect. If anything, um, on about two occasions, he has given um, the impression that um, he's not a fortune teller, um, he's not um, Nostradamus, and all those who have predicted his ambition are doing so based on their own self. The, the latest being the one by um, a group led by um, the senator who was removed um, by the appeal court, Senator Adeaye. So I think that he's simply trying to find a job for himself. Um, if um, the former governor of Lagos State, Balatinu, who is interested, I'm sure that with time, he would he would um, throw his hat in the ring and then Nigerians would have a choice as to whether to follow him or not. Okay, while I will allow you to remain an analyst and you do want to speculate, but uh, you and I, okay, let me not say you and I, let me not make an assumption on your behalf, but are there not enough signs that there is an interest to come out in 2023? Uh, we've had uh, uh, even the former governor of Lagos State saying that there was a gentleman agreement. We've had um, even the former Lagos uh, chairman of APC saying that uh, there is a plan for rotation. There are body languages everywhere saying that um, we might just be having a Tunubu building as political empire to go for 2023. Yes, I mean, the body language is loud enough. <laughs> we all know, but until, until he has said it, whether through his spokesperson or by a tweet or a declaration of intent, um, it still remains in the realm of speculation. And to go back to what you have said about this being his last time, I don't think that um, anybody has a last chance. And there are many chances. Um, politics gives us the opportunity to run as many times as we like. Age should not be a, <clears throat> a what do you call it? Age should not be a disadvantage. If you look at the last elections in the, U in the US, um, either way that the pendulum swung, the president of the United States would have remained a 70 something year old president. We currently have a 70 something year old president who ran on four occasions. So if you call him a perennial candidate, you're not wrong. So if Balasim does not run in 2023, there are several years that he has ahead of me. You've got you've got decide to keep him on the side. So I don't think that there's finality if he doesn't run in 2023. But my position is that um, the next president of Nigeria will be Nigeria will be better served if the next president were from the southeastern parts. Thank you, Baba Jide Benson. Thank you Thank for you. your consistent position on where the presidency should go in 2023. Uh, incidentally, the president that was supposed to be with you and the said is the man you referred to, and that's uh, Prince uh, Dayo Adeyeye, who, uh, who was a former senator, and uh, trust him. I, I want to believe that... Uh, he might have some information. We will do our best to have his take. Join us. Uh, since the network wasn't friendly today, let's hope that he will come and tell us his position and probably disagree with your consistent position. Thank you once again, Baba Jide Benson. Thank you. I'm more than happy to spar with him if the opportunity presents itself. Oh, good. Thank you. Good. Deal. I will bring you 
again. And uh, we will take a short break now. And when we return, I'll be giving you my take. Please don't go anywhere. And here is my take on the issue of underage being recognized as eligible voter. Quite shocking, you might say. What better word can we use to describe such move by the lawmakers? Like many posited, the sponsors should even be arrested and, if possible, be prosecuted for bringing up this idea in the first place. Since we are governed by constitution, it is therefore unacceptable. There are other issues begging for amendments in the Electoral Act. We should concentrate our energy on these and not get distracted. And that's my take on the issue. Plus Politics returns tomorrow, same time, same station. I am Coyote Ladende, saying bye for now. <laughs>